Hey guys, as promised, I'm back here. Uh, we had already eight moves since the last time we talked, and the game is almost reaching an end game already. So many things have happened. Uh, in this position, as I said before, I thought I had a small advantage, probably because uh, I have like better prospects to play d4, because uh, Black has a hard time playing d5 himself because e5 will be weak and both pawns would be actually very weak if d5 is played. Actually it's hard to play d5 without losing the e5 pawn. Uh, in the other hand of course I cannot play d4 now because e4 is hanging but I think I have a better chance to make it happen. Also there are some weaknesses here like d5 and c4 and, and my structure is for now more flexible because I haven't committed yet to playing c4 or I still have my pawn on c3 which is normally an advantage also mm, the, the black knight on a5 should be normally seen as a bad piece but here it's not because if you if you look around you can't find a better square than a5 because c6 is not a bad a better square at all because on c6 the knight is very limited here and, uh, and also it also closes the bishop on b7 so the knight is fine on a5 because it controls c4 which I will I will be happy to use with it for a knight and also b3 is a square that black can think about invading later as actually happened in the game so I think I have slightly better position for my better prospects of playing d4 which will pose some problems for black so rook b8 was played which I think is very natural just putting the rook on the open file and I didn't want to commit with bishop g5 right away. I didn't want to give the bishop. I just wanted to play knight e3, controlling very important squares, like trying to jump to f5, eventually to c4. And bishop c8 was played, which I think was a very good move. Now, if I play knight f5, you just take. And af after I take on f5, Black has a better chance of building a strong center because my e4 pawn will be on f5 and sometimes that's bad because my pawn on f5 is not doing much and my bishop may get shut down at some point if black managed to play d5 so after bishop c8 I put a lot of thought here in this position <coughs> if I play like a move like knight c4 black can even play like knight c6 now because my knight will be good will be a good piece on c4 but then my bishop on a2 looks awkward so after a long thought i i realized that it was important to exchange these rooks because also a possible threat for black was bishop e6 at some point and then invading that b3 square i mentioned and i didn't want to uh, I, I didn't find a different way to deal with this than simply playing rook b1. Even for a move placing my bishop on a passive square, I thought it was worth it because the rook was getting very strong on b8. And I cannot play d4 for now because the e4 pawn is hanging, so I thought rook b1 was the logical move, but I, I spent a lot of time realizing that. So rook b1, there was an exchange on b1 and bishop b6. Okay, now I don't get the diagonal anymore, but on the other hand, I can play d4 now because my pawn is protected on e4. But now would be probably too early to do that because then I'll be giving this b3 square, like even knight b3 at some point, or bishop b3 also would harass my queen. I don't know if I'd have a good square to place it. I actually, d4 bishop b3 would be very annoying because then a4 is kind of hanging and if I have to play bishop c2 then there's an exchange and okay that would still be playable but I thought bishop c2 was better just to prepare d4 and I, w I couldn't see how to stop it so queen b6 was played uh, I think it's very hard to defend d4 and it's interesting because white piece, the white pieces look somewhat passive now but d4 is gonna change everything because I'm gonna be putting some pressure on the e5 pawn and if there are a lot of exchanges as in the center as happened in the game then d6 ends up being a weak pawn so queen b6 
now d4 was played which was my whole plan and now I want to simply take on e5 I could think about playing d5 also but uh, actually it's already very difficult to defend the e5 pawn because if knight d7 is played then d5 wins the piece because the bishop doesn't have any more squares after knight d7 so there was an exchange here in the center massive exchange has happened cd cd e takes d4 knight d4 and now uh, I think white achieved what what I want I mean I, I achieved what I wanted because I now have I have a better structure now I have like these pawns which are very healthy and this the six is not that 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 healthy I'd say because the six is a weak pawn and I have some strong knights now jumping to f5 or just taking this e6 bishop and the position is becoming open uh, quite open I'd say so the bishop pair will, will have a will have a strong will have a bigger importance now I'd say so like a move like bishop d7 wouldn't help much because I can just play knight f5 and go after this e7 bishop and also there's a d6 pawn being attacked and an important thing I mentioned before is that the bishop on b2 now can go could enter the game through a3 or even b2 if, if the queen moves at some point and it would be a strong diagonal to be on b2 for example or even a3 just hitting the d6 pawn so rook c8 was played just activating the rook and now I took on e6 which I thought it was important to get the bishop pair and create some sort of weakness around the black king f takes e6 and now actually I'm making this video but I haven't decided on my next move I think my advantage is bigger now than was before I have a bishop pair the position is it's getting really open so my bishops could start doing some damage L start looking for doing that at least but I actually will start I still have two days for my move so I still have some time and I think it's gonna be interesting I don't know exactly my next plans and of course I want to I want to win the game so I want to discuss what happened before and I'm gonna keep the secret of what what's gonna happen next and anyway I hope you enjoyed it and I probably see you in the next in another I don't know five to ten moves let's see what's what's gonna happen what the game is gonna bring it to us and if you're enjoying just you can also follow my youtube channel which has mostly videos in portuguese but this analysis and other things can also be in english if there are a lot of people following so see you next time thank you